uh, at a very young age, actually. I always knew that I, uh, you know, I don't know if you really know you want to become an artist. I think you just become an artist. You know, that's uh, just by the virtue of what's inside of you. It either comes out or it doesn't come out. And mine came out at a very early age, and I knew I always enjoyed it. Um, it's all I did when I was in school was sit and draw and, and make things. And I hated school, but I loved doing art, so that's what I did. My parents were always very supportive in what I did. Um, I, I came from a very artistic family. My father always was painting or carving wood or building furniture. My mother did crochet and uh, handwork, both of my sisters paint. So I, yes, I came from a very, very artistic family and, and was always encouraged to do art, uh, except when they found out I was doing it while well, I was supposed to be doing math. I have other interests, of course, other than art, but they also, they, they also pertain to art. I like hot rods and fast cars. I like building cars. I like motor working on motorcycles. Copper powder coating on it. The whole interior will uh, will be like this when it when it's done. Also a shroud that goes over the top of this. Uh, again, everything on here is custom made. This air cleaner. I started out with this piece right here. This is a piece that I I got out of a the guy that does my exhaust pipes, junkyard. I went over there and I found a piece with just the right curve. I cut it to the, to the length that I wanted it, cut the center of it out, and added all the rest of the stainless steel to it. The reason I love this car so much is because of all these lines. This is one of the coolest de designed cars, as far as I'm concerned, ever made. Uh, very mechanical, I've done things like that all my life, and uh, uh, I find it to be equally as enjoyable as building sculpture. In fact, to me, it's the same thing. When you're, when you're building a custom car, you're taking everything you've got into you and you're putting it into that project the same as I do on my art project. So basically the same thing. Uh, I deal with young people a lot, uh, talk at sc different schools uh, through my grandchildren and, and uh, local, local schools. And uh, I always tell the kids, that if you feel like you've, you've, you've got the ability in you and you, and, and you feel like you want to become an artist, then by all means do everything you can to become an artist. But you have to know the fact that just like musicians or any other kind of artist, one in a million is going to make it. But you might be that one in a million. constantly evolve in my art through just a natural process. Um, every piece that I build pretty much leads me down a path to the next piece. Uh, every new mechanism I, I, I learn in, uh, uh, with kinetic sculpture opens up a whole new world of, of other projects to do. So I really did, I really don't have any idea what the future is for my art, and I'm, I'm happy that way. That's, if I did, I'd, I'd probably get, get bored with it. I've always enjoyed uh, Calder's work and George Rickey's and Lynn Emery's, and uh, without any really uh, thought that I would do it, to be honest with you, because I was a woodworker all my life. I. Uh, Everything I did evolved around what I did wood sculpture, I built cabinetry, I built houses, I built bridges, I built everything you can think of in wood. And uh, in 1990, I invented a fireplace tool called the LaBear Claw, made out, and it was a tool made out of steel. I didn't know how to weld. Uh, I just had an idea, and I got a hold of a friend of mine that did weld. And for the first year, all I did was design things for, around this fireplace tool, and my buddy Barry did all the welding. Well, one day he got tired of doing all the welding and said, do it yourself. And I picked up the welder and started welding. Realized that I was able to do this very easily. Uh, it just came to me very easily. And uh, from that point on, I've, I've never touched another piece of wood. I'll be working in steel the rest of my life.
I do an enormous amount of either recycling or using pieces that are already made. I hope my whole theory here is that don't make anything that's already made. You're just wasting energy and uh, wasting time. So because of that, I'm the biggest buyer of soup ladles in the world. I buy five, 600 soup ladles at, at a time. We use the cup, cups as propellers and we use the blades incorporated in a lot of our pieces. I even do complete sculptures out of soup ladle handles. And to me, it's very fulfilling because I'm saving the planet in a way and, uh, and using up things that are gonna get melted down and probably turn into something else, but I get to do it right here. If you'd like to see examples of my work, uh, they're actually all over the world, but here locally in Austin. I have, uh, I believe, 15 pieces out of the do domain uh, in North Austin. But my favorite one is the one that's in the middle of Third Street in between the Music Hall and the 360 Tower. It's a 20, 20 foot tall piece of sculpture dedicated to six of the most famous guitars in the world. And also, they, it was built in honor of all the guitar pickers in Austin. Uh, since I built that piece, I've been commissioned to do two more for Nashville. And uh, I'm actually in the process of building another one now that's going to go uh, in a hotel here in Austin. And those are my musical pieces. But I've got uh, commissioned pieces literally all over the country. The best thing to do is go to my website and you can see them on there. I'm very fortunate to have a very talented family, including my children, uh, who are also artists. And <clears throat> I think the most important thing that I'll be leaving them is the fact that being an artist, a successful artist, can happen. And that is it. <laughs>